everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with CJ Lou from the Fire It Up with CJ show. Woohoo! <laughs> Sounds like you've had a long week. I can hear it in the pause. I and that's, that's a great for our topic today. Yes, <laughs> if you've ever wanted or needed help from spirit, then do we have the show for you? Oh, trust today we'll me. talk about reaching out, asking for help, and how to receive it when it's delivered. That plus we'll talk about rapid rides, beautiful classes, angelic boardrooms, vertigo, posture, manifesting the new year, watches dying, and what in the world a new position for Rue has to do with anything. So <laughs> welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. <laughs> there, I had to get, it took a minute for the gears to click and then you're like, what a second. <laughs> Well, it's just like, is he promoted as CEO? Like, what is this position now? <laughs> is he the video he editor? <laughs> What's he doing now? In, in, well, in this case, so I've been getting into my fall running again. And mm -hmm. and uh, um, there's a little mountain that I go up really little once or twice a morning. And I carry him in my arms and kind of plod along. There's not so fast I can go with him in my arms. But what I discovered... Uh, when it was really warm, Indian summer. I don't know if that's a PC term, but it was really warm here mm. uh, a couple of days ago as I was wearing a my summer little fanny pack that I put my phone in. Mm -hmm. And he propped his feet up on this thing. And I realized if I turned it a little bit and put his feet on it, that he would support his weight in my arm rather than me. Oh. And I could move one of my arms to jog. He goes up and down like a little bit of a piston holding on to the... Uh, to the fanny pack that he can, so he gets a workout and fatigues. I get a better workout, and we're flying along the trail better. Yeah. And and it, it was kind of cool. It was I hadn't asked for this, and the theme today is really asking, and you shall receive. Um, but it was it was stepping back or stepping above your current position and go. How how do I do things differently? There's got to be a way. His feet hit my legs. We do this. I have to hold him. And we just found a new way for locomotion. So it's a new position with him in my arms where I can hold him with one arm and jog, which is kind of fun. <laughs> and, and I actually passed a critical mass of speed to where when other people see me on the trail, they don't stop me for a photo. Now, I'm happy to give photos, but yeah. I get nowhere. However, I can hit just above that jogging speed where they wouldn't want to interrupt me. <laughs> of you do you remember when lance armstrong was on that bike and he and he looked at yours and he's like vintage <laughs> he yes. looked at yours. i was thinking about that yesterday or this morning <laughs> yes there's good synchronicity I was that, about my, that. That, that's my best story that i tell over and over again but now i just imagine you with a bike and a rooster <laughs> i just i wonder what lance armstrong would say at this point oh no, no he's not he, this is running not on the bike the bike could have a trailer for him Oh, you have a trailer. <laughs> we just got the trailer a couple weeks ago. It's it's bright, uh, I think it's bright yellow, like me. Um, and and I know he likes uh, he liked stroller rides in the desert this winter, so we'll have him in that trailer, but not around here in Jersey. <laughs> okay. Jersey Rose, I don't want anybody in the back of a trailer. <laughs> okay. Yes, if Lance Armstrong saw me running along with a rooster, I don't know what he would say. It's okay. I send love. I. <laughs> whatever i don't know what i would say if i saw i've seen a woman jogging jogging around the lake nude without a top and then a, a gentleman who was supposedly talking to her an old man talking to her i'm not sure what <laughs> that was all about <laughs> seen people wearing strange items to their body um and running around and jock straps with just like something over their private parts shaped in a banana um, I've seen all sorts of things in Seattle, but never a rooster. Sounds like kind of more Maui sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> never, never a rooster. So, um, not to say that any yours is totally G-rated. I don't even know what the other ones are. G I don't even yeah, know what to call those. <laughs> okay, so there's a comment that people say that would fit with all of them that I'm not going okay, for. Okay, don't say it. Don't say it. No way. <laughs> um, Oh, but gosh. it's fun. And and what I'm doing out on the trails right now, um, it's been this beautiful, super successful, super, um, I won't use the term overwhelming. I'm laughing into everything. Um, 
but it's a full on time. And so on the trail, what I'm doing is I'm going to what I call an angelic boardroom. It's a download I got a while back and I'm going to a different angel or guide for each thing that's going on in my life. Hmm. Okay. So you need to work on what your health insurance piece is. Let's call it an angel or guide for that. You get to work on, um, what's going on with logistics on the show. Let's call it an angel or guide. Every single thing that's going on. And if we go back, I, I, I like going back to, um, uh, the Kabbalah, mm-hmm. Jewish ancient mysticism mm-hmm. and there are prayers in the Kabbalah. They're actually even modern prayers in Hebrew for everything, even for going to the bathroom mm-hmm. and having a successful outcome in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. We, are a praying people who have been in touch with the other side for everything since time immemorial, but we've forgotten it. So you can go in and you and I have done this, pray for successful outcome for our coaching Mm -hmm. and for our clients Mm -hmm. and for our talks. And so when I go out on the runs, I go and I meet with the boardroom of angels or, or I'll meet with a ministry of angels, you can call it, in my automatic writing. And I call in one by one, help in this area, help in the next area, help in the next, and I'm watching it come to fruition. I'm watching all these synchronicities oh, wait, I'm, take I'm place. confused. So, so let's say you're running. So you're running mm-hmm. and you're saying, I'm calling in an angel to help me with. And at that moment, or just generally speaking, you're like, in today I need you to come in and help me out. So you're calling them so in. So I'm jogging along this morning. I'm holding Rue in my arms. Right. And I'm going, thank you, angels. Thank you, guides. Thank you, angels. Thank you, guides. Thank you, angel and guide. Or thank you, angel or guide, for helping me with um, some logistical or... hoops with health insurance. Yes. Right. Thank you, angels and guides, for helping me with my interview with CJ. Thank you, angels and guides. And I tend to repeat things when I run. Mm. And I'm not going to a thinking place. But ideas will start to come to me that didn't come from me. From your running. Through uh... me. Wow. Because yes. running to me is a very meditative experience. I'll do the same thing in automatic writing. And this morning I, I had a list. What I did is I sat down and I called in what's called your master guide. Your master guide is the person who oversees, like the CEO in the boardroom. Right. And, and I say, master guide, please call in all of the angels and guides that I need for all of the projects that are on the table right now. And then let's go through them one by one. All right, master guide. Uh, do, is there an angel and guide present, angel or guide present to help me with insurance? An angel or guide present to help me with RV? An angel or guide present to help us with health? An angel or guide present? And then I'll go through all of them and I'll either hear a response or feel that someone or something is present. And I will put out my request because angels and guides to me, they're all unemployed until we ask for help. I mean, they'll put right. signs and symbols in front of us so that we'll recognize they're there, but we have to ask. Right. And so I can go through a list. It's not heading it. I'm not forcing it. I'm not, it's not an egoic thing of driving. It's a welcoming each one in, each with their own unique special skills, listening if they have something to say, and if not, just allowing things to unfold. But now they will unfold at a higher level because I've welcomed in assistance. Interesting. So when you do that, you come home, let's say that the insurance angel didn't respond with a, a good idea. When you get home, all of a sudden, well, oh, I have and, a better and, idea. And sure he did. I, I got an idea out on the trail of what I needed to take care of because we're, we're switching insurance from one state to another and it's, it's, it's all this intricate right. dance. Wow. Um, and so I got an email before going out this morning, and I never check email, but and I got an email before going out. I'm like, why am I checking email? And it said, we have a hiccup. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, so I'm out on the trail, and I'm like, I don't know what to do with this hiccup. Angels and guides of health insurance, you figure this out for me. Please help me to come up with a solution. And I'm jogging along, jog, 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 jog. And they're like, well, you need to make a phone call to Colorado. You do this, you do that. It'll all be taken care of. Cool. I came back here, checked in with the state of, of New Jersey. Hey, if I do this, do that, do the other thing, will this be taken care of? Yes. Wow. Cool. <laughs> Hadn't thought of that. So I'm wow. not forcing the issue. I'm no longer brainstorming. I'm not trying to come up with it. I'm saying, you guys take this. I'm asking for the assistance. And either we can have a discussion back and forth, and I'm here and listening, and I will hear, I'll hear it in my own voice. I don't hear like, you know, thou shalt call the state of Colorado. Right. <laughs> kind of cool. Yeah. Um, or nothing. But I just feel that I have now offloaded this to a higher power. Hmm. And it will always come back. It doesn't mean that everything is 
perfect, whatever that means. These are their, their learnings, their challenges in life. But the numbers of synchronicities and of, wow, how is that even possible that that happened, mm -hmm. that have taken place? Like, here's a strange one. This RV, which we're parked for a few weeks, just a few more weeks at, at uh, 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 Jessica's parents' place, and she's been really enjoying this chill time here. Um, the RV is meant to go to campground so that you can run your plumbing system off of the camping plumbing system, campground plumbing system. So we have no real plumbing here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have water in, but no way to get water out. Mm -hmm. And oh, I no. called around and called around, and I finally, still with me? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Okay, I call, yes, I, I called around and called around and found a place that I thought could take care of it. But there are all these hoops and jumps and I needed to buy different parts that would match with their vehicle and this and that. And I called a couple days ago and said, all right, I ordered all these parts. I've got something that will work. And they're like, um, we don't want to see them today. Bring them in another time. We can't oh. help you today. Oh, no. And I'm like, we need to get the vehicle offloaded so that we can sort of breathe easier in here. And so that we can go back to cleaning our dishes and things like that on the RV. And I said, all right, angels and guides of septic systems, angels and guides of plumbing systems, help me figure this out. And they said, pull up the list on your GPS again. And I pulled up the list and they said, that top one there, I know it looks like it's not close, call them. Okay, ring, ring, hi, this is Nick. Let me put you in touch with such and such, or this is Eric, let me put you in touch with Nick. Hi, Nick, I need an RV pumped out. I need it pumped out right away. Oh yeah, we do that. Do you need any parts or anything? No, 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 we're good. What's the cost? And in my language, he didn't say it this way, half the price that you were being told. <laughs> and we can have it done tomorrow morning. Yes, thank you, angels. Thank you. <laughs> And you know, I don't, I don't ask for help. But I'm realizing through this conversation that I don't, I think I, I have a meditation and it's called Guru Yoga. There's a part that's called Guru Yoga where you just sit with um, your gurus in that case, which are a bunch of Buddhas that surround me and when I do it and sometimes animals. It's just a big, big sphere of Buddhas around me. But I don't ask, aside from that meditation, I don't ask for help during other times. And and it's funny because I was just talking to someone who's like, you know, I'm, I'm just, I have these great ideas. And here's the question I have for you. When you run, see, I'll have sometimes these great insights and I'll be running and I'll just like be tying Texas while running. So I remember, do you just remember or you just say, angels, help me remember. And you remember what to do when you get home. Angels and guides of memory. And I've needed that one a bit lately. <laughs> help boost my memory, help bring this idea back to me. And what I find, not always, but with the big ones, always, but not always for the smaller ones, the ideas will come and chase me back down. Wow. So okay. I don't have to worry about it. I used to get great ideas in meditation years ago. And then, oh my God, do I write this down? What do I do? Do I break out of my meditation? And what I've learned is you can kind of bookmark it, let it go, they will bring it back to you. Because it didn't come from you. So it's not a one-time gig. They're not going, na 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 poo poo. Yeah, like you should have <laughs> written it down. Idea. No, it, it will come back. But you can ask for help even with the remembrance of it. In a worst case scenario, if I'm concerned I won't remember it, mm. then I will geotag it. Mm. And got to it. geotag it means I've got this idea for health insurance or whatever that I need to take care of right when I get them the door. I will picture the, uh, the door of the RV. I will picture where I put the key in the RV. And I'll say, Michael, when you turn the key, you're going to remember to do X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. And I will go to the house completely I forgotten about it. And I will go, yeah. You I it. do that with my watch. I switch it over. Then I was like, why is my watch here? And then I'm like, I don't remember why. I will ask, call upon the angels of memory next time. I love that idea. Yeah. I'm gonna, I feel like I, I need to be, because just in case anyone was wondering, you can, you can start at any time. It doesn't have to be something that, that you like, oh, I haven't really built a relationship. It's hard to ask at this point. Angels are there to... They want to help. That's part of their job. It gives them meaning. <laughs> I don't know. In, in, in the ancient days, in ancient times, 
Um, and, and we've heard of the mythical story that we were more of a spiritual being. We were more etheric. We were lighter. We didn't have the ego. Before the fall of Adam, you can say, we were more on the other side of the veil. And we were interacting with angels and guides, and we'll call them fairies and whatever, on the other side much more. Mm -hmm. Then there was the fall from grace, so to speak, which means a forgetting of who and what we truly are. Mm -hmm. uh, we can say that it happened as an experiment. It happened for our highest good. Oh, well, all of it is for our highest good. Who knows the exact reason? Angels too have left. They're just on the unemployment line. Yeah. Going, come on, guys. We can't do anything. But you have you have angels and guides who have been with you since time immemorial, that have been with you since the beginning of existence, and they help you each lifetime. You have angels and guides that come in and out for a few lifetimes, or for one lifetime, or for one particular project. They're always on standby. So they're having a boardroom each day on your behalf. And we've heard it called boardroom. Well, boardroom is what I've gotten the download. They've also said, call it a ministry of angels. We've heard that term from belief from many people. Mm -hmm. They're always having a meeting, but the most they can do at the meeting is go, how can we try to catch Michael or CJ's attention today <laughs> so that she or he will reach out to us? Because other than that, there's not much we can do except watch <laughs> this beautiful dancer train wreck going on. Well, Michael, I got the call. I got hit today because I wasn't this week because I wasn't listening. It started with my husband wanting to we're still kind of going through the machinations of empty nesting which means like well we would you know now that our son is definitely not going to be using his bedroom how do we start occupying his room so my husband moved all of the stuff that was started moving up in that room and um what i don't think he realizes how traumatic it would have been for him to do that alone without me because like a lot of my stuff was there in little piles of stuff that made sense to me but then he took all the little piles and combined them into logical piles, but in other piles, and they're in three different places in the house. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I came home, and there was so much energy that was moved around in the house from him moving stuff from one room. To, and he did a very deep dive in his move that I actually almost passed. I went for my first 10K, yay! And then I... Um, and completed successfully, and then I came home to, and I actually almost passed out. I, I was so dizzy from the energy movement and the thought of that room being kind of tossed upside down and all my stuff, I don't even know where, and, and boxes. And there was like like four boxes. And, and I said, you just created like 5,000 action items for me <laughs> by doing this. I almost like fell over. We then subsequently had to use some of the skills that we had just learned about keeping our hearts open um, <laughs> and stalking slowly. Oh, Tears. Oh, my point. gosh. And, and, and it just kicked me over the edge. And what I was planning on doing this week is working on my website. What I have been doing this week is um, getting cranial sacral work done, um, crying. <laughs> So I got hit, you know, like I, I was resting a lot over the last two weeks, but I think what happened was I guess I needed to rest more and I was starting to crank up the dial again. And, um, the universe said, no, thanks. <laughs> this isn't going to happen for you. It was crazy. And my, I sat in meditation on Saturday and was, and I actually, it was like a, a, a five hour meditation and we would have breaks and like we would try we do another version of this calm staying practice where you just tune into your body open up and then drop into your body and you get very embodied throughout the whole thing um and you feel what you you know you feel like oh my my heart kind of feels a little bit tightness and then you think okay, well, what is that? You don't, it's not an analytical thing. You're like, I'm just going to be with that tightness. And if you are open and in a vulnerable space and you will be with the tightness, what happens is the layer below that tightness mm -hmm. gets revealed. And then that opens up and then could relate, could, could result in, you know, peep, you know, <laughs> operators be careful, could result in massive tears yelling and who knows what so i was just 
cathartically releasing all this stuff, I started getting to the point where I could, I was not looking forward to the next meditation. I was like, oh, now what? <laughs> but it was a huge cathartic release. So that happened right before um, my dear husband decided to move the stuff around the house. And then this week, it. I remember last week we were talking about integration. I think if you don't do the integration, like I have like a pile up, you know, of stuff over the last, all these classes I've done, all this work I've done. And I think literally I just got taken, taken down for like yesterday morning, I woke up and I had vertigo and I couldn't even walk straight and I had to sleep for another, I had to sleep yeah. till 11 in the morning. <laughs> I woke up at 6.30, I'm like, I can't walk straight. And then I went to sleep till 11. So if you, I think talking to the angels would have been a much better strategy than <laughs> I to go there. When we lived in Maui, and, and I know I've shared this before, Jessica and I held space in a meditation center for a couple winters for about six months straight, three mm -hmm. or four hours a day of holding space. Mm -hmm. We were taking quite the deep dive. And... Life was falling apart all around us because we're getting to a still place. We're getting to a place of equanimity. But what we're not doing is getting any assistance with chopping wood and carrying water. Yeah, absolutely. And so I learned call in help and I'm learning more and learning more just how much you can call in help. You can call in help for virtually anything, anytime. So you get, <clears throat> excuse me, frog in throat. You get to your son's room and you go, Gideon, dear Lord, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> and you go, angels and guides for helping me bring order to this mm. in the easiest way possible. Angels and guides for helping bring peace. Angels and guides for helping turn this into the most beautiful experience. Angels and guides for helping me have peace in this moment and keep my heart open in this moment. <laughs> Please help me with this experience. And now you've called in a team. I think I will do that. I, and now it's, yeah. Well, I think actually there's, a, it was oddly a, a, a signal, right? Where it's like, it's time to move forward. You, you've been, mm -hmm. I've been moving forward um, um, my, the work front and trying all these new things and um, meanwhile, if you look at our closet and our basement, it's a bunch of postponed decisions, you know, things that just sit around postponed and they hold energy. Those things, as you know, as you've gone through, I don't know, three or four different box triaging things, those things hold a ton yeah. of energy. And just the thought of getting those boxes out of the house, out of our existence, because you were just doing that with the van recently, right? It's just cathartic. Time and time again, yes. And you don't realize how much that drags you down. So what Gideon did was so important, but I wasn't ready. To, I wasn't ready, but I now I am ready. I'm like, okay, let's do it then. If we're going to start, let's do the whole thing. Like, I don't want to just keep on, yeah. let's clean out the basement. Let's clean out all the closets. Let's clean out all the, like, just, just do it, but let's do it together. So <laughs> I know where everything is. But it's when I visited. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. You go ahead. When you visited. Oh, when I visited my family uh, a few months ago in Massachusetts, um, my parents were thinking of selling their house. And so they called me into the bedroom and say, you know, take what you want. We're going to throw out the rest. And um, instead of actually getting to visit with my parents for several days, it was several days of uh, cleaning out closets wow. and things of that sort didn't throw much away because I kind of called their bluff and I said, all right, if you're really moving out this fall, I'm going to be back up here. But if not, I will just take those most precious prized possessions with me. It was a very healing experience, both a healing experience going through everything. And it, it helped explain a lot. Like I went mm. through my books mm. that I had since I was a child mm. and got to understand a bit more of who I am, what I am, what I was learning, what brought me to this place, what I was ingesting with my mind. So it was actually really cool. I thought there were going to be a lot of inner demons that I'd have to go through. Yeah. Um, and instead, it was a very cathartic experience by leaning into all of that. Well, and I think sometimes you do go. So so um, I was talking to Gideon. We were still processing the move. <laughs> and, and I... Um, 
I was saying to him, I think what you don't understand, uh, and I, I was trying to explain, and I was like, it's like w if someone were to die, and the, the emotional part, because I think I said, but there's also, there's part of the logistics, like 5,000 little action items, which I already couldn't deal with, three, and now I have 5,000. And then not, you know, not knowing or anything else and feeling like a displaced kind of refugee because I'm like in my own house. Cause, and, and it's been that way forever. Like I had three different work spots in my house. So there's three different places because my show is recorded someplace because I have such a loud voice. I'm exiled from most of the house. So I have like certain things I can do in certain places. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm all over the house. Everything is all over the house. I take classes because it's too cold here up in my son's room. So it's just, anyhow, um, but what I said is I said, it's like um, when someone dies and, and you, and then I realized that all of this, all of the emotional response had to do with, you know, when someone dies and you, um, well, you haven't experienced this yet with your parents, but when a dear a parent dies, you have to get rid of the stuff in the house. And um, there is this, you know, the way that my dad died is he had a heart attack and was gone. So there was no way for me to really say my last goodbyes. So that's almost making me cry just thinking about it. So because I wasn't able to say my last goodbyes when my husband just went and then like took my son's stuff and just moved it all over the place, it triggered that feeling of despondency when my dad died and I didn't have like the yeah. ability to um, say my last goodbyes or kind of process it and have control over the process so that I could emotionally kind of go through it at my own pace instead it was just like boom heart attack deal with it yeah so so that whole thing kind of triggered that so I would say that that was hard you know that was very it was um, it was healing but it was hard but it was still really good because I, I feel a sense of peace. Like I get now why I was so upset. And, and um, I think when we move, this is why moves are so hard, is that you have to triage your life. You get to see the course of your life, the books that you read, um, the traumas that you endured. And you, you're able to like go back and do a redo, so to speak, or at least – a refeeling of it because I don't think I felt those things so I or I didn't even so much was happening that it was all a pile on that I couldn't even deal with the feelings of being out of control but those seem to be the things that are getting unraveled now for an express purpose right so that I, th I kept on thinking okay this is happening for a reason for a positive reason for me it feels awful, but I, I've got to believe that the universe has a message for me. Move on. You know, it's time for you to deal with some of these unprocessed trauma, traumatic events, and move on. Um, I, I wish I could call the angels and, like, please make this easier. I, I've done all sorts of things to try to ask to have this be more effortless and easy. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> It hasn't happened. I will call the angels to see. I've worked with do, my mind. Yeah. What would here's you do? where I would go. Angels and guides for unprocessed traumas. Mm -hmm. Angels and guides from strings, loose strings and attachments from the past that have not been healed. Mm -hmm. Angels and guides for confusion. Angels and guides for everything to do with being able to clear out the old and all of the memories and all of the heaviness and the burden behind it. Please help make me light. Please help get me through this. Please help cut all the strings and cords and attachment to these properties so that I may keep what is most important. So angel and guide for discernment, please come in. So my keep, keep what is most important, but that's so this is done with maximum flow, grace, and ease. I like thank the maximum. Thank you, angels. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I will try that. I did I did have, and thank God, because I'm sure this happens to you, but as you said, the ministry or council sends people to you. So if you're like, yes. I can't get CJ to listen, maybe. So I had um, a, uh, uh, during this time, miraculously, I have not been able to get an appointment forever with my um, spiritual teacher, but I was. And he said something interesting. It had to do with me posturally. What was happening is if you look at my head, I don't know if it's doing it, but my head kind of cocks back like that. And so okay. he was. there's an energy channel that runs um, all the way up here, like at the bridge of your occipital lobe. And he was saying that you want to balance. So your spine goes all the way up like this and you ha your head is like this. So you want to balance 
um, your head on top of this little pointed ball, um, but it's from this point here. And so when I, like, I was going like this, and I have to go more like, I think like this, I can't see. But when you, w that postural change was affecting, it, um, when people have PTSD, they go like this. And so it they does some back. Yeah, that makes sense. the jaw and their neck, your neck gets compressed. And when that happens, your energy gets compressed. So when a lot of energy is flowing through you, what was happening for me, given my postural position, I was throttling. So it was going like this and actually putting me in PTSD mode and actually throttling my energy. So it was like there was a lot of energy. Most of my energy goes through the top of my head. I can't, I don't know why, but I've, despite many, many moons trying to get it to go through my feet, it goes through my head. So when I basically talked to this gentleman, my teacher, he helped me open this channel so the things go through my head. And he said, you should get a cranial sacral, which during the appointment, I got a call from my cranial sacral person saying that she had an opening two hours later. Perfect. I, so I was like, thank you, universe. So I got his help during his time, which I was like, I'm about to lose my mind. Because when the change occurred with the house, none of my computers were working. You know how it's like the network didn't work, the computer didn't work, the printers didn't work, they sort of worked, and they didn't work. I mean, this was every single one of my client calls had, and I had a lot there was some technical stuff. <laughs> so I was, by that time I was like, and then I was like, I just want the spirit, this phone call with my spiritual teacher to be okay in terms technically. And it glitched out for the first eight minutes. And then I thought, and then I just, I got it back on the phone finally. And I was there crying <laughs> saying, I can't take it anymore. All of my tech, nothing is working. Um, but I will call upon the angels. And I do think even if you don't call upon the angels, the angels will send down, living angels to help to help you so like the massage this other thing and then yeah. yeah so i don't know it's been kind of the most craziest week ever and like how subtle things like how the body is so intertwined with all of this the postural thing really yeah. surprised me i had no idea that the posture would make such a huge difference in my energy flow and now that i've been doing this i don't i'm not i'm not having as strong of a reaction in terms of the throttling so yeah so how about you what else did you what else have you been praying for i don't have your list michael so i don't have i don't have it memorized yet so it's it's just been i'll, I'll wrap things up in just just a, a few quick moments it's it's been um there's been a letting go of doing the dance certainly i've been seeing a a chiropractor who does some other very special techniques at the same time as you, that's been very good. I got out for a bike ride earlier this week and I'm, I'm dreaming of a nice aerodynamic bike now because I'm on the heavy uh, e-bike to 19 miles an hour and then over that it's a 53 pound lead weight that I carry with me. And I had my fastest ride ever since I've owned this bike. So in a year and a half or a little bit less than that, I had my fastest ride this week which was just a sign to me of getting more in flow. Mm. I did have my watch die on me this past weekend. I did a, a beautiful swim with my cousin, um, who is a national champion for swim cycling. And, and we just did this wow. amazing hour long swim. And afterwards, my watch made it through the swim and it's, it's I am swimming. It records your swimming progress. Wow. Afterwards, it said, I'm done. Uh. <laughs> and, and it gave up its life. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I thought it was representative of the time changing and mm -hmm. of where can I throttle back as well. And looking at all these magnificent pieces without judgment from that upper perspective, mm -hmm. how does this all fit together? How can I bring more breath? My watch has given up. It said it's overwhelmed. <laughs> what can I do to find more breath? And so that's what I'm doing right now. Part of that is being willing to well, certainly ask for help, but also being willing to pass. Mm -hmm. I can't do that right now. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can do that. Yep. I'm going to have to pass on that. Yep. And that is creating more breath. So a teaching that I gave for our School of Mystics this week, it's about coming more to center, which is all the branches that you have out in the tree. 
and which branches can be trimmed so that your energy comes back more to center. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like this is the season where the leaves get to fall and some trees, each tree has its own personality. Some trees will let go of their leaves early and, and winter early and draw up lots of water, staying nice and safe. Other trees, particularly young ones, they go for it, hold on to their leaves as long as they can before the winter storms. And some of them lose branches. But it's about deciding when do we want to bring things more to center? When do we want to let go of what doesn't serve us now? Mm-hmm. That's seems, exactly where you're at. Yeah, and it seems like a theme. And then, I'll just can I add one more thing that is related to that? Is that... When I went to the um, <laughs> when I went to the um, chiro- uh, cranial sacral, she said it feels like you have several beings inside of you. I'm like, you mean like schizophrenia? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> she said you have all these, you have parts. She said, and what happens is when you do a bunch of work, like I feel like you have stuff that's been in there for like three weeks, ready to process, right? And you just keep on adding more, jamming in, so there's no space and time to integrate. So it's basically, you need to, so like when she created the opening in my head, it, it, like I said, it felt like a bunch of people trapped in a fire that were finally rushing out the door. There's so much energy going mm-hmm. out of my head. But that's, creating space is literally just that. So it could be, you know, energetic space, which was happening. It could be physical space, like my garage, your, your RV, you know, dumping out the stuff in your, your van, right, where you found the place to do it. But it's creating space so that the new stuff that has been emerging, right, can come in. The old stuff can leave. And the two can figure out, well, who's driving now? Because there's so many people. It's like you're having, like, a party and all these people are coming in. They're leaving. And it's like, who is even in charge of this party? And um, for me, she's like, it's like you have a bus and no one's driving. I'm like, yeah, that pretty much (laughs) sounds like the truth. Because when you go through letting go of your, when you start letting go of your ego and you start letting divine play, like it, there's like a little job, there's a a positional job transfer, just like (laughs) Ruhab. No, I mean a real, there's like a, there has to be a CEO of, of CJ and Michael, you know, it's, you have the, what did you call it? The head of the ministry or Oh, CEO, what did you call master it? Master guide. Yeah, the master well, guide. master guide. That's your CEO. Yeah, the master guide has to come in, have space to, like, set up the desk, figure out what's happening, and she needs to, like, figure that all out, right? But if, if, mm-hmm. if, if people just keep on rushing in the door and rushing out and there's no space, then to integrate everything, then um, it doesn't work. So that would be my only add-on <laughs> to that. Ask for the guides, but make ta- make sure you have the – space and time to integrate and um, have your body figure everything out. Um, Because if not, the universe will find ways to make that happen. (laughs) I don't wish it upon anyone, but I've just experienced a week of hell. So this is what, not hell, Hmm. recapitulation, forced recapitulation. (laughs) Kind, gentle, easy. Yes. Kind, gentle easy good uh, yeah that's what we seek yes i i will ask about the angels excellent any last words of wisdom nope how about I, you no, i'm good. good here i'm good it's just so peaceful this is such a nice soft energy we'll go with it on this note so for everyone out there this is michael sandler and cj lou from the fired up with cj show saying be well have pause, integrate, ask for help, and above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo!